Hello, my name is Mike Kosh and I'm with the USDA. I'm here to talk about how soil moisture affects your everyday life. When we talk about soil moisture, we must give a definition first. Volumetric soil moisture is volume of water per volume of soil. This is the common usage that most of our measurements are trying to get at. This ratio of volume of water to volume of soil. But there's an absolute way to take this measurement, which is going out and taking a physical sample. We use the thermographic metric method, which would be shoveling out a volume of soil into a can or a tin or a bag, then taking that sample to a laboratory. We put that soil, uh, we'd weigh it, we put it into an oven. That oven would run for 24 hours and it would give us just the soil back, removing all that water over the day. And then we would know the difference between soil and water and soil. Then we know the water. And that ratio is really what we're talking about here. Volumetric soil moisture. Seems very simple, but it's pretty complex. And it takes a long time. So if we really want to get at this from other means, like remote sensing or modeling, or regular in situ monitoring. Before we go too far, let's talk about how we actually measure soil moisture. Here is a typical probe that you would see installed in an in situ network, one of our three legs. This is inserted into the sidewall of a hole that we dig, and it measures the dielectric constant of the medium in which it's installed. That medium, for our purposes, is a mixture of soil and water. Water has a very high dielectric constant. Soil generally has very low dielectric constant. Therefore, the higher the dielectric, the more moisture. We can typically have a good observation range of moisture, which goes from zero to 50% moisture. 50% moisture is uh, in the range of a muddy uh, walk to work, for instance. So this can monitor automated at low electrical cost, Solar panels generally are enough to run these things. And it gives a small volume of measurement. And we hope that this installation provides a good reference point to the large area around it. So when we talk about soil moisture stations in situ in place, this is really what we're referring to, something along these lines as an example. Now you know how it's monitored via in situ. But we have other ways of measuring it, including remote sensing from aircraft and satellites. Or if we have a lot of other information, we can model. And that really comes from trying to get at the entire water cycle. But why do we need to measure soil moisture anyway? Soil moisture is a valuable parameter for a variety of uses, including agricultural management, where we would use water soil moisture estimates to help us irrigate effectively. We don't want to over-irrigate, we don't want to under-irrigate, we don't want to have a drought. We don't want to have water run off all of our valuable nutrients into the rivers. We also want to be able to plan. Our river forecast centers need soil moisture estimates so that they can control releases from reservoirs as rain patterns come through. Because the more water you have at the surface, the more will run off. And this is used in a variety of conditions for basin management. It's also used for assessing the risk of wildfires. Knowing the amount of soil moisture available at the surface basically tells you how much water you have in the plants. And then you know what kind of fuel load you have. And knowing the fuel load can tell you your risk for wildfires and forest fires. These things are all affected by soil moisture in their largest uh, scheme of things. But we all start with a simple measurement. We need to know what is the soil moisture. One of the older methods of doing this is to actually have a physical station monitoring soil moisture, say, down the road at your local college at the airport. Here's an example of a typical station at the Soil Climate Analysis Network. This is in Beltsville, Maryland, just down the street from my office. This station has been providing data for about 20 years, which is a valuable record of data that will both inform climate decisions and modeling development as well as providing uh, just simple reference for any of the research going on at this experimental station. 
we need to understand soil moisture state so we can start to get an idea of what the evaporation rate is, what the energy cycle is doing, because soil moisture also controls the, what the solar radiation does as it hits the surface. Does it turn that water into water vapor and therefore taking that energy and putting it to evaporation instead of heating the soil? But here we start with a simple station. A couple of sensors in the ground, solar panels running everything, providing the basis for all of the research that can happen and all of the decisions that can be made off of understanding a few parameters at the surface. We're now going to talk about how networks like this across the nation could be coordinated together to better understand the water cycle, energy cycle, and carbon cycles of the U.S and make better decisions in the future.